Dr. Jessica Pereira, uh, number one in the merit list, Sri Lanka's ERPM examination. How do you think your university supported in all of this? So talking about VSMU, uh, I have nothing, there's no complaints. When we went to Belarus, we actually, I mean, we, we, had, we had no clue about the place. So Dr. Buran, Dr. Dinesh, they actually really helped us a lot. Why would you recommend VTEPS? and good evening to whoever is watching this video. Now this interview we are going to have today is going to be very important if you are someone who is looking at entering to a world class medical university. But if you are a parent who is looking for the right university for your son or daughter, well I believe again this interview is going to be adding off value to your decision making process. Today we have none other than Dr. Jessica Pereira. Hi Doctor. Hi. Now, why is Dr. Jessica special here today and why exactly are we interviewing her? Well, we all know when you pursue your medical studies overseas and if you're planning to come back to Sri Lanka, you have to face an examination called the ERPM or we easily know it as the Act 16 examination. Dr. Jessica Pereira, who's sitting right beside me, um, obviously, and I'm more honored to actually announce this on camera, that Dr. Jessica Pereira ranked number one, uh, number one in the merit list of performing extremely well at the Sri Lanka's ERPM examination. Dr. Jessica, how does it feel to be Ireland's number one from the ERPM examination? Yeah, so actually it came as a shock to me because I did not expect this because mm -hmm. so at the end of the day I'm happy so whatever I did finally uh, uh, showed and then I'm actually happy at the end of the day. At the end of the day. Yeah. Now, I mean, I am actually honored to um, speak to you because I've met a lot of doctors who've been in the top 50 and in the best top 200. But this is the first time we've seen um, in a very long time, obviously, uh, number one, right, to interview a number one. So I believe that your parents, yeah. the hard work at university actually did paid off. Yeah, so yeah. I would like to congratulate you, Thank right, you. because we are extremely proud. Uh, to consider you as a number one uh, island ranked uh, candidate from the ERPM exam. Now, talking about being number one at the ERPM examination, how do you think your university supported in all of this in terms of academics, if, if I would say? So, I went to Vitebsk State Medical University. So, talking about VSMU, uh, I have nothing, there's no complaints. Starting from day one since first year to sixth year, it has helped me so much. And I think for me to pass ERPM with such high rank, VSMU contributed a lot. Starting from its uh, non-clinical years to its clinical years, it helped me a lot. So yeah, it actually contributed a great, uh, in a huge amount to this success. All right. So that's wonderful to hear. Yeah. Now, um, we do have a lot of students who ask about um, now when you go to a country that does not speak English as their first language, when you meet the lecturers, how does the accent sound to you? Is it easy at first? Uh, the accent was actually not an uh, issue for me because I mean, it was, I mean, it was understandable. It was actually not a problem. All right. Yeah. But how would you say uh, learning Russian? was for you. Now we understand that at Vitebsk you do the full six years in English yeah. but for your clinicals you need to learn Russian. Yeah. How was learning Russian for you? So they teach us Russian from the first year to okay. the third year onwards. So they teach us from writing to reading and we have exams every year. So it was uh, so it actually helped us with our clinical years which start from fourth year onwards. Mm -hmm. So it was actually not a big issue because Russian language itself is a very easy language I think. So it was not a problem for problem us for to you. deal with the uh, patients. Patients. Yeah. Now talking about patients, because you came onto that topic, yeah. uh, you entered to a government university, yeah. which means you went through your clinicals at government yeah. hospitals. How was the training at the government hospital back in Belarus for you? Yeah. So we had several hospitals for uh, for several subjects. So at every hospital, they used to take us on ward rounds in the morning and then they used to give us, I mean, the exposure there was really good. 
I mean, yeah, we had we had to go to a lot of hospitals, and even during COVID, during the pandemic, they, I mean, we were not, I mean, they did not neglect the fact that mm -hmm. we should not go for clinicals, but actually exposed us to patients with a lot of protective equipment. So clinically, there was no any uh, disadvantage. I mean, it was actually a really good exposure. Exposure, yeah. right. Um, now, I'm going to ask you a very personal question. This could be very important to the parents who okay. could be watching this video. When we send off a girl overseas, the major concern is the safety. Yeah. Um, how would you talk about the safety in Belarus, doctor? Actually, I felt more safe in Belarus than than here in than, Sri Lanka. Yeah, than here in Sri Lanka <laughs> okay. because so I lived in the hostel okay. and we had a curfew actually, which was 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. and uh, so we had to come back. So that way also it was very safe. And even outside on the streets, like it was actually very safe. I mean, I could walk out uh, on the streets at 12 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. and that uh, 1 a.m. and that was actually not a problem. It not was, a problem. It was real. It was really safe. That's, so that's, that's actually good news yeah. for us to hear because that's one of the most, I would say, repeated question we get from the parents. Um, another one more question would be now, you know, to become a medical doctor, most of the parents believe or most of the students believe yeah. you need to be full on your academics. Yeah. You need to fully straightforward to your academics. It's the only thing that will make you a successful doctor. But I've seen you. Uh, been extremely involved in your extra co-curricular. How would you comment on how uh, you need to balance work and your passion towards medicine? Yeah, so at Viteb State, we got a lot of extracurricular activities and actually that's a big plus point for me because whatever I, I mean, five days a week we had to study from 8 to 4 mm -hmm. a PA and having those extracurricular activities was actually a stress relief for me and that made me actually relieve, I mean, actually relieve my stress and helped, I mean, helped me a lot in a way. So balancing work, of course, I mean, I mean, the work as a medical student is not I mean, it's not that hard if you actually know what to, you, have, you actually have to be smart in what you have to do. Mm -hmm. And if you do it in a methodical way, I mean, balancing your extracurricular activities and studies is not a hard thing. Big thing at yeah. all. Yeah. All right. So now that's, I would, that, that, that I would say is a one big advice, yeah. right? If at all you can balance everything in a yeah. methodical way, you can easily get that done. Um, now, when you were in Belarus, uh, when you firstly went to Belarus, yeah. you must have not... Uh, you know, known anybody from yeah. Belarus, it could have been, I mean, everything could have been very new to you. How was uh, the environment for you? How was the society in Belarus? Was it okay? Was it uh, up to what you expected? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we had around 300 Sri Lankan students in an actually, it actually felt like we had a mini Sri Lanka in Vitex. <laughs> okay. So it, it actually helped us a lot because we did not feel like, I mean, I didn't get homesick that much because we had a lot of people around mm -hmm. us and uh, yeah, I mean, we had a lot of seniors who guided us with our hostel work, with our, I mean, uni work and whatever, I mean, we had a lot of seniors who helped us. So having a lot of people, a lot of Sri Lankans around me helped me. Helped you yeah. very much. Now, I believe uh, Dr. Bhatia, yeah. Dr. Burhan, uh, Dr. Dinesh were there for you in Belarus in, in terms of whatever the support you needed. How would you commend, um, you know, in terms of the support that they've given out to you as a medical student? Yeah, so when we went to Belarus, we actually, I mean, we, we, had, we had no clue about the place, about the language, mm. where to go, what to buy and all that. So Dr. Buran, Dr. Dinesh, they actually, they were in their final year and mm -hmm. they actually helped us a lot. I mean, whatever the issue, whatever we, when we had a, even the slightest issue in our room, they attended to it and they made us like safe and they made, I mean, it, they made it happen mm -hmm. so that we were felt comfortable in, in, in VTEPS. So yeah, even Dr. Bhati, I mean, he, he helped us a lot throughout our six years there and yeah, actually no complaints. No complaints at yeah. all, right. Now, um, when you were researching right after your A-levels, you must have researched on plenty of universities yeah. to go overseas, right? And I think you must have met uh, Mr. Intikab Zufa. Yeah. How was his support towards uh, you selecting a college? I think Mr. Amila, Mr. Intikab, Mr. Horace, all of them were a part yeah. of it. How would you comment on the support that they've uh, given out to you? So I was guided by Mr. Intikab. So he actually guided me about several universities uh, in China, in Belarus, and then he explained every university and how every every university differs. I mean, it coming. I mean, starting from the budget to the language, mm -hmm. the number of students. I mean, the pros and cons of everything. So I actually had a good understanding about Vitep State Medical uh, Medical University because of Mr. Intikab, and that made it easy for me to choose that university, university. at the end of the day. Yeah. All right.
So that's wonderful news. I shall pass off the <laughs> you know, message off to him. Um, so Dr. Jessica, two more questions to yes. ask from you. If you were to recommend uh, a university for, um, let's say, a junior of yours, yes. would you recommend Viteb State Medical University? And if so, why would you recommend Viteb? Definitely. I mean, I would definitely recommend Viteb State Medical University, uh, especially because of the, uh, I mean, I, I felt like I had a lot of people around me. So it helped me academically and also with my social life. And like you didn't, I mean, I didn't feel lost in an unknown, unknown place. Yeah, so because of that and because of the uh, clinical exposure, because of the extracurricular activities, that place is an all-round, I mean, it has everything. So I, I, so I definitely recommend Viteb State Medical University to all the juniors. All the juniors. Yes. And what would be your one advice? It could be more too. Uh, what would be your advice if uh, somebody wants to become a doctor? What would, be, what would you tell them uh, if they want to pursue uh, a degree in medicine? So my only advice is like, stick to the basics, understand whatever that is taught and medicine is definitely hard. So don't lose hope, mm -hmm. uh, be motivated and somehow achieve, uh, try to achieve that goal at the end of the day. Right. So coming from the uh, island's number one ERPM performer, Dr. Jessica Pereira, if you have the willpower and the passion to study medicine, go for it and study hard. So that's what she has to say. So Dr. Jessica, Thank you very much for joining Thank with us so and uh, I believe you are, you have brought pride and fame to your alma mater, Ave Maria Convent Nigambo, right? Um, and I wish you all the very best for your future endeavours and thank you very much and hop into our next episode if you want to get more content information.